Alright, what's up guys? My name is David Kim with Algos Explained and I know I've been saying lead code is the best but um, it's down right now. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna be doing you an algorithm problem on Code Wars uh, which was the original platform I used to do videos on and um, yeah I thought I was gonna give you a whiteboard video today too but uh, my neighbor's kids are in the hallways and so not sure if the mic will pick that up, but my concentration will be divided anyway. So I'm just in my room doing a screen recording. And so let's go ahead get started with this question. It is uh, level 5. I think I think the easiest is level 8. And so who knows? You might get this as at a phone interview. It's probably one of the more challenging ones on a phone interview. Um, but we'll see how hard it really is. I don't think you'll get this on a on-site though. I feel like it'd be a little bit too easy for that. But uh, this works with Fibonacci. Uh, Fibonacci numbers, if you don't know what Fibonacci numbers are, they give you an example right here. It pretty much it starts with a zero. Some people say it starts with one. Um, here it starts with zero, and then the next number is just the two previous numbers before it added together. And uh, they give you that formula here. Seeing so, you know, F stands for like the Fibonacci function. So if you want uh, N, so if you want like the say you want the zeroth place that's going to give you a zero if you want the first it's going to be zero plus one which gives you a one if you want two it's going to be um uh well actually no if you want one it'll give you one if you want two it'll give you one if you want three it'll give you these two numbers added together if you look down here real quick way down here in the examples f of eight we see that it's 21 because um, this, I believe, is the eighth index. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the Fibonacci number of the eighth place is added is the for the previous two added together. So eight plus thirteen, twenty-one, and so that's why Fibonacci of the eighth the eighth Fibonacci number is twenty-one. Uh, that's how Fibonacci works. I'm pretty sure you guys already knew that. However, this problem works with is asking for the product. Uh, multiplication and so they're saying they're gonna give us uh, or let's just read it given a number say product prod for product we search two Fibonacci numbers f of n and f of n plus 1 verifying that f of n times f of n plus 1 equals prod might as well be f of n times f of n minus 1 doesn't really matter just uh, two consecutive that's what matters um, your function prod fib takes an integer prod and returns an array. Okay, so they want the answer in an array format. And so they want the one Fibonacci number, second Fibonacci number, and true, or Fibonacci number, Fibonacci, and one. Okay, what does the one stand for? I don't, I'm not sure. Or Fibonacci number, Fibonacci number, true. Okay, I mean, they gave us that true form here already, so I don't know why they gave it to us again here. But depending on the language, if f of n times f of n plus 1 equals prod, okay. Um, oh, I guess the 1 stands for the true, maybe. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, in JavaScript, we're just going to return true. But maybe in a different language, you had to give either a 0 or a 1. Um, or maybe that was the false. I don't know. For JavaScript, we're just going to go with true. If you're using a different language, you probably already know more about that than me, so good luck. <laughs> if you don't find two consecutive uh, Fibonacci numbers, verifying that uh, two consecutive, these stand for two consecutive Fibonacci numbers, the prod will return. Uh, so pretty much, in this case, you're going to still give us two numbers, but with the false. Ah, okay, so zero is the false. Um... So f of m being the smallest, such as these guys. And so in order to best understand that, um, so we know, okay, in a true case where two consecutive Fibonacci numbers equal to the product of whatever prod number we're given in the parameter, in a good case, we're good. In a false case, what exactly, which Fibonacci numbers do they want? Pretty much they want the last two that... So what tipped it over? That's what they're asking for. And so if you see here, 55 times uh, 89 equals this. 
but it obviously doesn't equal 5,895. However, so we could assume, okay, 55 was the Fibonacci number, uh, 89 was the Fib number, and 144 would be the Fib number after um, 89 being, uh, of course, 55 plus 89 is 144. And so we try to make 5,800 95 but with these numbers I mean it obviously wasn't these two so we tried the next two combo but it, that tipped it over and so those are the numbers we're going to give in our um, output um, okay so we got some notes here not useful here but we can okay we're not going to read if it's not useful why are, why are they even giving it to us maybe if we need answers later we'll go back to it but for now uh, I think we get the idea with the Fibonacci problem I'm already thinking there's going to be some kind of recursion just because Fibonacci is like the father of recursion uh, or that's kind of one of the things you learn as you're learning recursion so I feel like we already have to do two things we have to have a Fibonacci list or like some kind of data structure to hold all of our Fibonacci numbers but at the same time we don't have to increase that blindly we can increase that little by little while checking for the prod and if it matches then we could output right there and if it doesn't then we can just increment it one by one um, we don't increment it by two because then we might be wasting uh, an execution at the same time um, it'll be easy for us to get the last two I think you guys get what I'm saying, like if we had 55 and 89, that was true. If we're trying to get this, we're not going to check out 144 and the one after that. Uh, we have to check out 89 again, so let's increment the Fibonacci data structure just by one number at a time. Um, what data structure are we going to use for that? I would say let's put it in an array just because we can access the indexes of an array very easily. We mainly need it for the fact that um, one, we need to keep it in order so that we're not going to use some kind of map uh, because, um, yeah, we're going to need order and we just need single digits. We don't need uh, a value pair and so we're not going to use like an object. Um, or I, I guess I meant to say we're not going to use a set to hold all these Fibonacci numbers because we, we need the order of things. And so, okay, so Fibonacci numbers, we're going to use an array for that. And as we test out the numbers to see if they equal to prod, um, if it's less than, we're going to add a number to the Fibonacci data structure. And if it is uh, over, then we're going to exit right there. If it equals, we're going to exit right there. Okay, cool. So I'm going to uh, write this and I'll uh, convene with you guys in a second. All right, welcome back, guys. Or it was just a second for you guys. I took a while to create this solution for us. Um, and just so that I, you know I'm not wasting your time, run sample tests, that works out. I'm not going to attempt it just yet, but we're going to go over the solution first. And so this is the solution that I came up with. So let me make this a little bigger. Cool. All right, so product, product fib. We know that we're looking for either the last two Fibonacci numbers to be equal to the product parameter that they gave us or to be greater than. Um, if it's less than, they want us to keep going until it's either the match or over. Um, th those are like the key logic pieces. And so let's take that, let's run with it. Um, we know that we discussed that we're going to need a, an array of Fibonacci numbers um, and we wanted to keep them in order more or less so that we can um, what is it? So that we can make sure we're working with the last two. Uh, if you wanted to, I guess you could only you could choose to hold on to only the last two or the last four, uh, just so that you could keep your array constant. But I don't think we need to do all that, especially for this problem. Uh, what we did here is we I added a new parameter here, fibs, fibs equal to zero and one, because though they're the first two numbers, or I can't say first two, though they're the zero and first numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, you can start calculating Fibonacci numbers starting from the second the second Fibonacci number, meaning this is the zero Fibonacci, first Fibonacci, and the second Fibonacci being zero plus one. Anyways, uh, calculating Fibonacci numbers, that's just taking the first, the previous two and adding it together. 
Um, so what we want to do is we want to check prod. We want to check, okay, did the last two Fibonacci numbers equal to the product that we were given? And if it did, um, we want to return the last two, uh, this being the last two, and a true. If it went over, we want to, again, give the last two. So this is the same right here, but with a false. And um, if it didn't, then that means we're still under, and so we want to do it all over again. And uh, when we do it all over again, why not use the same function? So we did use a recursion call. Um, and I want to point out again, I'm pretty sure you guys got it, but just in case you didn't, I added this Fibonacci um, array right here myself. If you take a look at, let's see, let's get this back down to normal. If you take a look at these tests, fib, product fib of this number, they don't give a second parameter, they just give a product number. And uh, so what I did there was I added this fibs by myself. And so if the function call doesn't provide a second parameter, it'll default to this guy. If it does provide a second parameter, it'll go with that second parameter. And that is what happened here, where we added the fib. So this is the case. So this is oh, this was a perfect match. The second else if was over. Third is, of course, if it's under. So we got to increase our fibs array. And then we got to do it again. Check it out. We got to check the product again. And so once we get back here, fibs is a one number bigger and then we'll check it again and then check okay is it a match is it over if it's still in there we're going to make it big again and we're going to run this function again slightly bigger fibonacci array and then of course back here check prod you get the idea so let's go over to check prod see how uh, i made it do what we wanted to do and so the logic is pretty simple we have our fibonacci array right and we have the product number that we want to get to and so we're just holding on to some variables here, fib1, fib2, being the second to last number and the last number. Um, this is a, I won't say this again, I guess, uh, this is a, the, the way to get the last numbers. Fibs of just, this is the index number, and we're guessing, okay, of the length, we're minusing two, that's gonna be the second to last, minus one, that's gonna be the last number. And so true prod is going to be these two numbers multiplied together, and so pretty much if true prod is equal to prod, it's a perfect match. If not, if true prod is greater than that, great, we went over, um, we're going to return that. Uh, and if not, we're just going to return, uh, we don't need to return anything here per se, because those are the only two cases we care about match and over. Sure, we could say it's under, but um, if it's not match or if it's not over, we're going to have to do it again anyway, so it doesn't matter. And so that's what check prod does. It checks, okay, is it a match, is it over? If not, um, just let the function do its thing all over again. And so uh, those would have returned successfully. And okay, at the case where it is under, if those two multiply together, those last two Fibonacci numbers multiplied together, it's still less, then we gotta add it. So that's another helper function there. And we go all the way down here. And so again, we're given our fibs array and going back to the original function, fibs on the very first function call equal to this. And um, well, if we have gods in here, we're going to try to add one more number. We're going to add another one there because zero plus one equals one. And so pretty much exactly similar to this check prod, how we grab the last two Fibonacci numbers, uh, num1, num2, we could also have called a fib1, fib2, um, very similar. And we're going to push it into our fibs array that we got here, and we're going to return fibs. And <clears throat> I think, I believe if you put this function within the scope of this function, we wouldn't have to return it. But I just returned it, I just reassigned it, and we're going to recall it over here. Um, and that's pretty much it. Eventually, we're going to get to a Fibonacci number that, or, the, or we're going to get to last two Fibonacci numbers that are consecutive that are going to be the perfect match to the prod parameter that we were given, or it's going to be over, and so we're just going to return over at, and, um, well, let's try to attempt sample test again. It should be successful. Uh, almost, almost a second there. We're going to attempt it. Hopefully it's good. Okay, cool, it passed. Um, 
did they try to give us any tricky ones? <coughs> I don't think so. And honestly, if I were to try to think of some edge cases, um, the only thing I can really think of is negative numbers. But at the same time, if we were to be given a negative number, um, unless we're going like anti-Fibonacci, because Fibonacci is an increase of numbers, right? Um, if we were given a negative product number, we would have to autom automatically return false because there are no consecutive Fibonacci numbers, even if we do like an anti-Fibonacci that can multiply to a negative number, which would also be consecutive. So yeah, maybe that's a thought that you might want to throw at your interviewer, but um, almost not worth it. Other edge cases, I feel like I feel like I can't think of it. This problem was pretty straightforward. Um, it was more a, of a, can you incorporate some form of recursion into it? Um, I know that finding Fibonacci numbers themselves, you can use that use a recursion formula for that. Um, in our case, we didn't use recursion for adding Fibonacci numbers, but we did use recursion for the problem itself. Um, and so, okay, so hopefully this problem was very useful to you. I'll link this one in the comments. And if you have any questions, um, comment it, I guess. Uh, and if not, um, subscribe, like the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.